Jupiter at night is presented live before an internet audience. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Cast of Failures. My name is John. I'm Brad O'Keefe. And I'm ja- Angela. <laughs> Tonight's episode is all about, guess what, memory loss. Uh, we thought, you know what, we here at the crew at Jupiter Night, we are a bunch of multitaskers. And that has led to one major thing. We don't do anything right. And I can't remember a thing. Mm-mm. We are pathetic. And so we thought we need a way to improve this fairly dramatic situation. We have gone for the last... Drinking just won't do it. No. No, in fact, it seems almost like the more we drink, the less we remember. Although that's, like that. that's still up for some study. Yeah, we're, we're still experimenting with that one. It's yeah. not solid yet. Much more rigorous testing must be conducted. Mm-hmm. Much. But we thought maybe there's tools out there that could help us sharpen that memory. Um, some of us even suggested it's just a muscle. Just work harder just at it. Just flex really hard in your brain. Yeah, I've tried Try that. to move objects. Mine's mushy up there. I, I'm pretty sure it's up here, but... I might have made room for hair, and I got rid of the memory or something. <laughs> I like honestly that. just forgot to do the memory stuff. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what are you gonna do? Well, as actually, as to prove our point, we're using the time frame of two weeks. We actually we- don't remember when we started doing <laughs> this. <laughs> that's, that's true. I could probably check my earliest note from Evernote. That's what I was to, thinking. To find, but I don't think I started using it right away. I think you had to remind me a couple times, hey, we're doing that thing, remember? Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. No, I got to get that. Yeah. <laughs> and see, I downloaded it, but I never used it once. Now, see, I, on the other hand, I, I should have brought my Evo out here. Oh, I think I just left it over there. I, I recently switched to the Evo 4G. Well, I've got my Evernote here on and the you got iPhone, an iPhone, but uh, I forgot to charge it. <laughs> so... <laughs> That's true. <laughs> it's going to go dead, dead any minute now. <laughs> but uh, the J-Man and I here have been pretty good about sticking with the Evernote usage. Mm-hmm. Um, in fact, uh, we've been using it in some really clever ways that I have found actually have actually made a really good improvement uh, in my memory. Now, I know you want to talk about voice notes. I and do. I think because you're going to talk so much about voice notes, I'm going to mention uh, the photo notes because that's what I use the F mm, Okay, right. Uh, I know you did too, but I've been using Evernote to take a picture of anything I need to remember. Wow. Anything that I think is going to, anything I think I'll need to be able to refer back to. So I'm trying to make a judgment call there, and it's not always successful. But I'm doing like a, a, a great example is uh, I had a client's whiteboard. And I thought, mm. okay, you know what? We had a conversation about the contents of this whiteboard. I might need to remember some of the stuff we noted. And I took a quick snapshot. Okay. Of it. And that's, it makes sense. And that's, or, or like case. an address or a serial number, that kind of stuff. Well, and uh, Evernote in particular, if you sign up for the premium service, which I don't remember how much it costs. <laughs> 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 Too much. Get the free one. But, Don't uh, even worry if you, about it. If you do sign up for it, then uh, if you, when you like take a picture of text, it, it can parse the text. It'll, it can it'll read it OCR for you. it. And right. so uh, oh, that's I, I can literally like take pictures of business cards mm-hmm. and then uh, throw away the business card. Right. And that is really nice. Or give it back to them. Yeah, you know, it's and more say, like hey, you go I to, stored it digitally because I'm more important it. than you. I, I, I do do that sometimes if we're there. I'll be like, can I just. All right, here you go. Thanks very much. But like at a conference and stuff, you come back with like a bag full of cards. I'm actually looking forward to using Evernote for packs this weekend. It's going to be and awesome. See, I'm not going to have too much time because it's like a phone uh, d- uh, over there. Well, Let's no, go there. I'm going to use Evernote for like all the stuff that I beforehand that I'm thinking of that I want to store in there. So I'm going to recall that up when I'm at packs. Hmm. It's going to be like, the, oh, yeah, I remember to look into this stuff. See, the thing for me is on the phone, it's too hard to type. And for me, it's too embarrassing to speak into it wherever I'm just standing around because you look like a weirdo like... Hey, blah, 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 blah. No, I, I think the exact this. opposite. If somebody's overlooking and you're like you're talking to yourself, giving yourself a note, dictating. There's a, well, there are either one of two things. One is, hey, that guy must do a lot of drugs and not be able to use his brain at all. Or what? two, uh, wow, that guy's very studious and organized about see, his life. See, that's not what I'm worried about. I guess I'm more worried about the things that I'm trying to remember and oh, how I like, word it. And people don't are forget like, to change pants because you just soiled yourself. Well, no, it's just like a funny idea that I'll have, <laughs> but out of context, it could sound very, very odd. Yeah, no, there's, you know, Jeremy has uh, some audio notes in here from like uh, dreams and stuff like that. Yeah, I decided to try to use it as a dream diary. So this one night, I, I woke up in the middle of the night after having a very intense, deep dream and started just dictating. I hadn't listened to the note until just now before the show. Uh, I'm not going to play that on the air because it's a little bit embarrassing. But uh, <laughs> it's handy now for personal use. I really want to hear it. <laughs> now, so the whole idea was is 
if you could if you could throw these different bits of data from your life, if maybe it's your parking spot you took a picture of, maybe it's an audio note, maybe it's a text clipping, and then you could go back and assign <laughs> tags to them. So like, you know, uh, whiteboard. So I just tag uh, that whiteboard picture with whiteboards, and I go back and look at all the pictures of whiteboards I've taken. Oh, yeah, there's the one at this client because I could also tag it with their name. Does doing this actually improve your ability to be more organized? Because let's be honest, you're not really – you're not remembering – all the stuff, at most, you're remembering that at some point you filed a pointer to something here. But that's part of the problem I'm finding with this is I don't always remember that I did. Like that dream diary, I didn't even know was in here until right. I decided to go back through. I find there's a lot of stuff in there I forget that I'm doing. I do remember, uh, I'm good at like, if I know, like for example, like uh, I have like some hardware and software you know, behind the green screen. Mm -hmm. I don't know exactly what hardware and software is in there, but I know I have <laughs> very hardware rarely and software look back there. there. Right. Yeah. But I know I have hardware and software there, right? And a lot of spiders. Theoretically. <laughs> well, they should be sprayed for. But if that's like my Evernote. I know that if I had something I covered at a meeting, I store meeting stuff there. Mm -hmm. I, don't remember that, I don't remember that I stored meeting number XYZ on date XYZ. Hmm. But I know what's in there. I'm having... That uh, works for me. Uh, honestly, quite... Uh, I'm having a little bit of trouble with Evernote because it, most of the memories that I put in here fall into two categories. One is I'm never going to remember that S, and I'm never right. going to take the time to look it up again. The right. other uh, category is just by the act of putting it in Evernote and making the effort to remember it. You remember it. I remember oh, it. Well, yeah. that, that's with anything. That's like a little tried and true thing. More. If you write it, yeah. If you yeah, write it yeah. down, if you read it loud, if you repeat it to yourself, you're going to remember it. Now, maybe that's a good thing. It does get the job done. I mean, eventually, I can probably go through and delete half the stuff because either I'm never going to follow up on it. Or I've already remembered it. We should say um, the kind of the requirements for this is the stuff we wanted to use, we wanted to be able to use on a smartphone, mm -hmm. Android or iPhone, <coughs> and we also had to have a web interface. Evernote had a bonus because it also had a, a desktop interface if you have Windows or the Mac. Mm -hmm. But one of the things that you used Evernote the most for, which I think it's not exactly its strong point, at least in the uh, free version, is you used it for voice dictation. Right. There's other services out there that I've been using. I've, I have... I've probably used Evernote since 2008, and I've probably used Recall, R-E-Q-A-L-L, -L, since uh, early 2009. Now, I looked into Recall a little bit before the show because you just told me about it today, jerk. I've this never even awesome. heard of it. It's pretty um, cool. Maybe you just didn't remember to tell me about it earlier. Probably not. Yeah, but uh, yeah, this looks perfect. It parses your voice input. Yeah, and it's great. It, uh, so That's they, what it's built for. It comes with, an, uh, it comes with a great... A uh, couple of different apps: iPhone apps, BlackBerry apps, Android, a web version. Even if you are re if you are an Outlook user or a Google Calendar user, mm -hmm. uh, and I'll get to that. I'll come back to that in a second. It also has a plugin for Evernote. And what Recall's strength is is voice dictation. And Evernote you can dictate to, but Evernote won't transcribe that to text for you. And also on on at least on the iPhone client, you can't append notes. That drives me crazy. To your voice. But Evernote allows you some slick ways to get data into Evernote for storage. Like you can have your own uh, notebooks can have their own email address. Mm -hmm. So recall can you can record into recall, it will transcribe to text for free and then send that off as an email. And you can have that come into Evernote. And that'd be sweet. Because then it's transcribed in Evernote for you. I want to go back to Evernote on, on that email thing real quick because we also discovered that by could, sharing our emails to each we other... We could send our, each other notes. So we, we could, could do remote memory implants. We were basically giving each other memories over the wire, right. which is pretty cool. Great <laughs> I don't for, like that. No, it's... it's, it's Get out of my head! Uh, <laughs> leave me the hell alone. The, send uh, me a text message like a normal friend. <laughs> uh, to circle back to uh, Recall just for a second, one of the things that I like a lot about Recall is uh, it's contextually aware. So when it does the voice transcription, you can actually say, oh, email Jeremy tomorrow about uh, the uh, PAX tickets, right? And then... Oh, will, I was supposed to get us tickets. <laughs> 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 it will actually, it'll actually uh, tag that tomorrow and then send you a reminder tomorrow to do that thing. So it'll act as a reminder service. It'll send is, you an email tomorrow oh, that's saying, sweet. hey, don't forget, you wanted to email Jeremy today. Is Recall also the one that you can record in things like uh, doctor's appointment, September first, three thirty. Yeah. yeah, and it'll parse it and put it in your calendar. Yeah, yeah, and if you if you use their plugin, I think you might have to pay for these. But if you use their plugin for Microsoft Outlook or for Google Calendar, if you're a Google Calendar user, it'll actually add events that you dictate directly onto your calendar. That's pretty cool. That's fantastic. If you forget about, if you're like, yeah, dude, I'll totally go over to your house for a barbecue. That sounds awesome. Mm -hmm. I Later, always dude. remember barbecues. Yeah, well, how can I barbecue? forget work stuff? Big hunk of flaming meat. Yeah, yeah barbecue's a bad example. My apologies. There's some things that just in 
indelible memories. Yeah. You cannot no, get around no, those. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, how about... Uh, yeah, I'll be at your wedding. Yeah. Yeah. Great example. Great example. Mm-hmm. Your wedding. And then, you know, your phone rings. It's psh, in, in your ear out the other yeah. right? So you just, instead, you dictate that effort right into recall. Boom, it's on your calendar. Then you'll never forget a friend's now wedding. Now, what anymore. happens, like, say, for example, you have that wedding planned, and then <clears throat> all of a sudden you have another appointment. So when you put in the other appointment, does it say, hey, just so you know, you have a conflict of interest here? I don't think it, I don't think it's smart enough to give you that, but you could always just, you know, You know, just generally speaking, I have not yet encountered a single app no. that, that <laughs> notes your calendar um, conflicts. Yeah. I don't. Outlook. Well, yeah. If you want to use Outlook, yeah. That looks kind of lame. Um, <laughs> also, something that I haven't yet had a chance to play with, but we'll just move on while we're talking about services. But I wanted to give a mention to Dial to Do, mm. Dial the number two D O, which is supposed to be more of a it, you call it and it's a more more advanced speech recognition and commands like even Twitter messages, read me my email, stuff mm-hmm. like that. Send and, Twitter to Bob. I'm positive yeah. that's not free. I'm almost. I don't even know if <clears throat> they might have a trial. But and it don't. It, that's not available for iPhones because you have to be able to multitask to use it. So it's, or you can just call. You can also. They just have a one eight hundred number. You dial. Oh yeah. well. Okay. The app itself says BlackBerry and Android now, only. Grab those. Uh, grab those um, pills you have there. Oh, these ones? Yeah, so I I also experimented with these. Uh, Drugs. Always experimenting with pills. <laughs> no. I actually am not a big pill person. He doesn't um, know anything about them. These are just something his pusher gave to him. <laughs> <laughs> no, I looked these up, actually. Okay. All right. All right. Let's. Oh, those video. smell terrible. You guys, I was internet really? stupid for a minute. I got to be honest with you. I actually haven't told you this part of the story. Oh. Yeah, well, let me smell. I don't remember. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> just eat them quick. Don't smell oh, yeah. them. Well, actually, they kind of smell like berries. No, they don't. Like dirty berries. Yeah, okay, dirty berries. Really dirty berries. Your face is dirty berries. (laughs) Uh, So it's Bacopa. Bacopa. I was looking up something. I don't remember what, but I, you know, through the internet, I got to Wikipedia, where you know, you pretty much everybody ends up at Wikipedia. And it's always true and realistic. So I then I got into something about memory, and I found something about that, and then I went and looked it up, and they people were talking about on Wikipedia, and then I went and found on Amazon, and people were reviewing it well on Amazon, Mm -hmm. Uh, and it's it's a it's a plant extract. Um, yeah, which you usually can't go wrong there. Called Bacopa, and it uh, it's actually it's used in a lot of different countries for memory boosting. I, I'll say this: I, I used it for a short period of time, um, two or three days, maybe, <laughs> maybe five days. Oh, I thought it was closer to like a week or two. Oh, it might have That's been a week. Actually, time. he doesn't no, remember. It was, it was a week. It was a week, but then I used it for another couple of days after on and off. It made me dizzy once, and so I quit using it. And I don't know if that was just like a bad day or what, because I'm not. I don't get the phasia or something like that very often. Yeah, I'm not like I have dizzy spells, and yeah. I don't have to go You're lay on the fading fainting. couch. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, all right, oh my stars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, I think I'm gonna hold off on that for now. Uh, but you know what? What? I think, didn't you guys both comment that you noticed it was working? All right. You commented, and I think you were a little sharper during that time, but, you know, it Did might you have... Call? Nope. There's a thousand different things in real life. I don't remember you even mentioning these pills before. Jeez, I a, really hope you didn't mention them to me. I did. We talked about it while you were in there editing Here, take, the, take these home with you. you. <laughs> Jeez. I can tell you've been working out your memory muscle real good. I will now. I got pills, yo. <laughs> but, uh, Better living through chemistry. I just can't confirm or deny that they actually worked or not, but people on Amazon sure seem to think so. Wow. I know. But the placebo effect is very strong. Yeah, that's what I was really cautious of. But then, like, you know where I, the reason I thought it might have been working? Because I was accidentally remembering stuff that I would never normally remember. That's the stuff that I noticed from you. Yeah? It was just that weird, like, oh, blah, and it had nothing to do with what was going on. Right. Yeah. It was just I was able to retrieve it. And yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Um, so anyways, I'd be But curious. that might have just been random misfiring. Right. It could be. Who knows? <laughs> and that's just it. It could also just depend on how well I slept that night before, which mm-hmm. is usually I slept pretty trashy. And that really affects memory. Out of everything else we're doing, that's the big thing. I guess in you summary, know, though. Between sleeping like crap and drinking on occasion and, yeah. and some of the other terrible habits and you have in your life, a lot. and multitasking, we're really doing everything we can to destroy our ability to remember anything. That's true. Ever. I'm amazed we remember to do this show live every night at 9 p.m. over jupiterpodcasting.com slash live. But we hope you remember. <laughs> what were you going to say? I almost forgot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, before we wrapped up, Jeremy, I wanted to get your final thoughts. Did you are you going to continue to use this tool to extend your memory? I think I'm going to switch to Recall because I really love audio. What about notes. using Recall totally. to store into Evernote? I might do it that way, but that seems like an added layer of confusion. I then, see. I look at I look at Evernote as like the back end database, and Recall Maybe. the front end. Oh, and I actually into. have used Evernote for a couple cool things over the last like uh, actually just last week on one of the post shows. Yeah, uh, somebody sent me some direct messages of links. 
I didn't want to have to tell him, you know, I usually tell you guys, just email it to me. I don't have time to look at those. Instead, I just took a picture of the screen. Oh, okay. And it's in my Evernote. And you were able to get, and it was legible? And yeah. I mean, yeah. it's not great. It was a picture of a computer screen. But yeah, I read still. it enough that I can go home and type that in without having to go through the extra steps of asking them to email me. They That's might forget. Uh, there was also the name of an artist that Ange, your wife, played on the faux show before a previous show. I was able to store that. I haven't looked it up yet, but I have it. I had a crazy idea. Before we go, maybe I'll just finish with this idea. To really bring home, the, to, to close the problem we have with Evernote right now, I think our, main, our, our, our group problem was sometimes we just forget to even use Evernote. Mm. We forget to use the tool. My solution to that is as follows. You guys um, may or may not be f familiar with QR barcodes, but they're little square barcodes. You'll see it a lot for Android software and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And they, lo they look like just little, like they could be a little sticker you could put on something. They actually, they remind me of the creatures from Space Invaders. Yeah. Yeah, they kind of look like those guys. Exactly. <laughs> and you can use a QR code to, to, to retrieve, uh, you know, arbitrary data, which could be an Evernote URL note. And so, and you could get a little like uh, inkjet sticker sheet and you could generate these QR codes for free. There's just free websites that'll do it. And you could associate like we could put like a QR code on that on that rig right there, that computer. Mm -hmm. And then we could associate that QR code with a specific note. And then on our phones, we could scan the QR code because they all have QR code yeah. scanners. And then it would call up the Evernote right there on our phone and we could have all the information about that computer. That sounds like it'd be really handy for your line of work. You could put the specs in a QR code on every single... But I could apply that to the studio too. I mean, that, so that I did come up with it for my day job right. for IT stuff. Mm -hmm. But expanding on that though, I mean, we could even do the mixer and you could call up and it could be all the notes for all the audio levels, which mics are into which channel, right. mm -hmm. stuff like that, right? Or like we could have a picture on, on a computer so you know, okay, turn things on in this order and, put, and, a, and a QR code on the camera. That could be handy. I yeah. just wish I was important enough to use any of this because <laughs> all of this is like, well, that'd be, well, what would I use it for? I have, I have I thought I just gave no you a couple of fantastic that. examples, Alan. For you, yeah. Yeah. For, for people with real lives and real jobs. Oh, yeah. I, I have a brainstorm that this might help you out. I okay. mean, you go fishing. Once a go. year, and you're stuck on a boat. There's right. got to be a ton of stuff too that you. Do you ever just sit around brainstorming, and you wish you had a way to like easily take Capture a note? It all? I do. I, and then you just I flip open out your... up my little notepad that yeah, I have that and radical. click on my pen and just write away. What are we in the dark ages? <laughs> I'm on a boat. <laughs> Actually, I got to be honest too. Sometimes I find writing to be the best way to remember and it capture does. something. It does. It does assist with your memory. Yeah. I think it it engages a different portion of your brain it makes you think it out more as you're typing it out and a lot of times when i go back to handwritten notes i understand it more than stupid oh, I little notes that. i wrote on my phone i don't know about that i think i've told you guys before that i i am notorious for having piles and piles of sticky notes just yeah. containing anything that i ever thought about on uh, all over my computer right. desk oh, well no. i took a picture of most of the the useful ones and they're in my evernote now throw them all out now, I've already started building a new collection, but <laughs> theoretically, in a couple of weeks, I can consolidate them, yeah. take another picture, and throw them away. I mean, it's nice because you always have it with you, and you can always take notes and retrieve information, and it syncs mm -hmm. to the web, syncs to the desktop. So I, I like Evernote a lot. I think it's a good tool for this, but I'm curious to know if anybody else has tricks out there to improve their memory. I'm uh, sure. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Yeah, I'm sure people would have something they could pass along to us. I think it's kind of the problem of our of this generation with social media and all of the different news sources we have. There's I mean, too much going in. Just all, yeah. There's just too much going in to retain it all. So I'm sure everybody else out there must be running into these kind of memory bandwidth constraints and I'm curious to hear what your solutions are. I wish we had like a forum or something that they could like post those. You know, you know? Jeremy, we actually do. Really? Yes. Oh my I'd goodness. forgotten all about JupiterColony.com. <laughs> JupiterColony.com. <laughs> there you have it. And you know what? If somebody has a really good a really good system to solve this problem. If you wanted to highlight it in Jupiter Colony, I would absolutely love to cover that on a future episode. I would love if to we remember. That. If if we recall. But if um, you remind us, we will. And one last shout out. Uh, we're going to be at PAX this weekend. If you're in the Seattle area and you want to meet up, uh, just come find us at PAX. Probably the best way to do that is to contact uh, either myself. I am twitter.com slash Chris LAS. Or I'm twitter.com slash JB Jeremy. And I'm Alan. He's not on Twitter, but he'll be around one of us, so... That gets the job done, too. We'll have him on a short leash. <laughs> the hell with that. I'm going to be running around like a kitty candy shop. <laughs> Woo! That's right. We're all going to be equipped with cameras, and we're going to unleash on the back. It's going to be a blast. <laughs> okay, everyone. Well, thanks so much for watching tonight's episode of Jupiter at Night. If you enjoyed tonight's episode or another episode, please feel free to send it out, Twitter it, link it, blog it, email it, 
Facebook it. Tell your friends. Sneak it into your friends' Evernote accounts if you have access to those. There you go. <laughs> I like that. Take a picture of it. I don't know. Do something to help us spread the word so we can grow the show. We'd always really appreciate that. And, of course, feel free to join us live Monday through Thursday over at jupiterbroadcasting.com slash live at 9 p.m. Pacific. You can join the chat room like the fine people in there now. And uh, we'd love to see you then. Until uh, tomorrow night. I feel like we've forgotten something. I know. Peace. Peace.